In this video, we'll find out how we can integrate the ant the date picker with React Hook form. We're going to handle field errors, focusing, and storing serialized data in our form state for submission. So we're only going to have the timestamps submitted, not the entire date representation from the entity date picker component. Now, if that sounds like something you are interested in, stick around to find out how I am going to do it. The final result looks something like this. We're going to have a reusable component that uses the React Hook form control to handle the communication between our usable date picker and the state of the form. And we can reuse it as many times as we want in as many forms as we want uh, from here on out. Now let's take a look at how our starting project looks like. I have and the React, React DOM and React Hook form prepared already. Uh, I have a form that is initialized in our application. It is ready to handle submission, but it will hold no data for now, as well as a date picker field, which is not integrated, not linked with any state management in our project uh, coming from and the. Now, if we head over to the docs, we're going to see that even the first example shows us how we can handle the change event from the date picker. And a little bit down, we're going to find that we can also set the value. And we notice that we also have focus and blur for our field. So I'm going to copy over this. And I'll make sure to have the right types imported we're gonna leave this like so for now i'm going to link it to the component and i'm also going to create the local state to keep the change date in there now i'm going to use null for the initial state we're gonna because i want to see how the date picker behaves with uncontrolled values or with falsy values so if we set value to controlled date now we shouldn't be able to select anything, no matter what we do. And if we link our set state to whatever this value is made of, this date value, we should be good to go. Now I'm going to ignore the type error for now. I'm gonna allow this to be any because we're just doing an experiment and seeing how this component behaves. We're not really worried about type safety at this point. So it seems that our date picker works fine. Let's also log the value that we have in the state. Now this will allow us to see exactly what the internal representation looks like of our, our date picker. And we see that if we have no data, it's null. And if we select something, we have this string, which makes us uh, think that actually this might be a date object or something more complex. Let's also log this information so we're sure. Uh, and yeah, it looks like we are holding quite a lot of data in our state. Now we would like ideally to store only the timestamp. So that's the thing that we're going to use in our form when we ready to submit or when we receive data. Um, so let's see how we might do that. If we hover over our uh, first parameter, we can see that this date is a day.js day .js object. Now upon further inspection, we see that the value is supposed to be of a specific day.js type. And if we click that, we notice that Andy is actually using this DayJS library. And if we go through the docs a little bit, we see that we can actually serialize and deserialize this DayJS object as a Unix timestamp. So basically calling value off will give us the timestamp and parsing it is super simple. If we just send over the timestamp in milliseconds to the DayJS object, we're good to go. So if we install DayJS, import it on our page, And then instead of sending the control date value, we attempt to parse our timestamp as a DJS object, only if it exists, of course. But if it's null, we don't want to attempt to parse. We just want to send null again. And when we change the date, instead of saving the control date as a DJS object, we just take the timestamp 
from it and again we take care of the null checking before we call value of we should be able to just save and restore the same dayjs object as a timestamp so let's see if that works and there we have it we're actually saving a number and we're passing the number back into the value field and now if we clear the field we actually have null because we have null we are not setting any value in our date picker now that we've set up the serialization and deserialization of the date we are ready to move on and add react hook form controllers on top of our date picker so let's see how we can do that we can start adding our controller which we hopefully already know that it expects a control object from react hook form as well as the name and TypeScript already helps us with the available names from our field or our form and also takes a render function that will hold the values that we are interested in for our field. So here in the render we can move our date picker and now we can start adding values from the field and replace the callback and the properties from current setup now i know we will still keep a null value in our field so field value could be null so we can leave it like that we can still keep our ternary operator but we're gonna pass the field value to the js if it's not null otherwise when we make a change we can start to copy over this whole callback we're not interested in the day string at all and we can call field on change to pass in the timestamp information into the internal state of react hook form now if i start changing this value it still works i can still clear it but now when we submit we see that we actually get the start date and if i pick a value and submit i see the timestamp prepared already now our log string is still null that's because we're no longer using the control date from our local state so we can get rid of that and if you want if we still want to see what the react hook form internal representation holds for our field we have the watch method the watch function from react hook form which again is type safe and it can show us what we have inside our state and we end up with a very similar situation but notice that the initial value is actually empty notice that we have absolutely no value initially and if we select and then clear the form we have null meaning that the default value is undefined yet we don't have any errors for components passing from uncontrolled to controlled states because we are defaulting to null if this field value is either undefined or something falsy but what else is missing well we're not handling errors and we're not handling focusing and we don't even handle blur either so let's go ahead and add that let's start with blur because that's super simple and let's also pass the name and now let's just see if graph will work because remember we saw that there are common methods available to imperatively call focus and blur on our field in the docs so let's see if this works let's see if we add a rule for our controller to have this field be required and now when we submit because we have no data the field is focused of course we don't see any errors yet but we see that the focus functionality with the ref is working now to add errors we have a field property called status which needs to be error if we want to see a red border around the date picker so we can make this uh, ternary operator quite easily by taking in the field state from our render props and checking if we have an error. And if we don't have an error, we're going to return undefined because we don't want to show any additional styling on our field now when we submit we see that our field gets focused and it shows a red 
border, meaning it has an error. And we can quickly show a red message, red uh, error at the bottom of the picker. Again, with the ternary operator. And of course, with a red color. And we should be good to go. Oops, the color, not the background color. We should be good to go. We should be able to see a nice error message and have our field focused. And now let's take a look at how we can make this controller reusable so we don't have to copy paste all this boilerplate every single time we need a date picker on our worms. It's quite straightforward to do that. We're going to make a new component here. I'm going to name it React Hook Form Date Picker field and that way all my components that are supposed to work with react hook form are namespaced and they start with rhf and i can return everything that was initially in the form and i can create a props type for our properties and these properties will include a control which will be of a specific type in the end but for now at least for this video we'll leave them as any because we're going to talk about that in the next video this this whole type system can become a lot more complicated than uh, it is right now we also need the name of course because uh, we're going to use different field names for different date pickers and we're probably going to add additional things like maybe a placeholder or something like that but that's beyond the scope of uh, this video so let's go ahead and get rid of the type error and pass in the name here like so and yeah actually let's add a placeholder why not it's so quite easy placeholder optional string and i think the date picker has a placeholder value like so yes a property that allows us to set whatever label we see here so by default it's select date and it can be something else if uh, if you wanted to now, if we copy our component and try to instantiate it here, it's going to complain that it needs a controller, like so. And the name, of course, which is going to be start date. And then we have it actually have another start date on the screen. Let's get rid of our initial field and add an end date as well. And let's see if the end date can have a placeholder of end date and our initial field have a placeholder of start date like so now if we submit the error system works focusing happens only on the first field if we pick some information for both of them and press submit we actually get the data available for submission and that's pretty much it folks uh if you enjoyed this video please remember to like and subscribe to my channel it's going to help me a lot in the next video we're going to take a look at how we can improve upon the type interface for our control and our name as well as integrate the autocomplete combo box from material ui which is one of the heavy control components out there and one of the the most interesting or hard integrations with the apple form uh, that we we see in the wild so to speak so again hopefully this was useful uh, and i hope i'll see you next time